a show that's three dimensions away from Mad Mags taking place anywhere else besides Australia. I'm your host, 3D Jake, and today we're looking at Mad Max Fury Road, released in 2015. Mad Max Fury Road is directed once again by George Miller, who directed the original trilogy. Well, he directed the first two and then had to leave during part three because of the death. And so, of course, it was re directed by someone else, and of course, we turned all that piece of shit turned out. And this time around, he's once again returning, and this time in the rebooted series. And this is written by him, as well as Lico Rivataras and Brandon McCarthy. And the movie, this time around, stars Tom Hardy, Charlize Theron, Nicholas Holt, Zoe Kravitz, is it Rose Huntington Whiteley, Riley Corf, and of course Hugh Key Burns as Immortan Joe. The movie is essentially a reboot of the Mad Max series. And essentially what it ignores 1, 2, and 3 and it has its own continuity that happened. Of course, uh, Mel Gibson's continuity was Mad Max, The Road Warrior, and then Thunderdome. Beyond Thunderdome. So this one right here is essentially not those. This one is, at the beginning it's established its own continuity where he had a little kid and they got killed on the Fury Road, and so basically what happens is he's basically a loner and everything, and, you know, it doesn't apply or whatever, he had a wife or not, but, you know, we saw his kid get killed at the beginning, and he sees his dead child around, and, you know, it essentially is like this new continuity of this Mad Max world, and I really do appreciate that we got to see a new Mad Max, because I, a lot of people were wondering if this was going to be like a sequel to the Tom, like Tom, the Mel Gibson movie, but Tom Hardy essentially reprises, essentially plays this role and by placing Mel Gibson, which I think he does a wonderful job at it because he has no real lines in the movie. He only, I think, has less than like 10 lines in the movie, and but he, he plays his character so well. And, you know, every time I watch this movie, I just see Mad Max. I see him as Max Rostinsky. That's who I see him as. You know, I used to think it was Max Rocksteady, but no, it's Max Rostinsky. And so, and he plays it so well. Like, you know, I don't, I know when people were like, come to the movies coming up, they're like, oh, he's not Mel Gibson though. And I know back in 2001, it was, they're Mel, they were going to do a fourth movie and it was, this was going to be it. And Mel Gibson was going to play that role. But what happened was because he got older and his legal troubles and all that stuff. And George Miller just kind of wanted to start fresh and like hit the reset button, you know, and say, look, Fury Road is a reboot. And so listen, this one is like, you know, new Mad Max and everything. And so, and this is only one movie, but it feels like you could see it. I could see it as the end of the series, but at the same time, it's also the beginning of the series in a way, or a way where it's like, hey, they beat the, uh, you know, the, it's a peaceful place now and everything. And I think I really like that about this movie. I enjoy the, this movie so much. I mean, like, it's shot, it has a beautiful cinematography, beautiful score by Junkie XL, which, oh my God, Brothers in Arms, I've listened to that so many times. You know, like, ba -na 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 -na, tsh, tsh. I mean, oh my god, just so good. Like, oh my god, just like, in the, like, in the practical effects in this movie are wow. Like, this movie was so big, it got like six Oscar wins. Because it was so big. Like, I mean, obviously, like, it made almost $400 million. And literally, this movie, like, you know, like, I mean, this was like, a, I mean, it did okay at the box office. But, like, it, like, people loved it. Did well on Blu-ray and DVD. It literally was like, won six Oscar. I mean, everybody loves this movie. And Warner Brothers was like, look. We want to do another one. I mean, it took a long time, and now we got Furiosa coming out. And I just, I love the fact that George Miller was able to direct this. Like, he shot this in South Africa instead of Australia because he wanted to match, like, this big Australian tone and everything. He wanted to match, like, be, like, a really deserted wasteland because, it's like, look, I feel like that's the Australia's more populated, and I want to do it, like, this way. And I love how, like, you know, Tom Hardy is just essentially, he's the lead character, but, like, he's literally has, like, no lines, and he's literally the, you know, I would say Furiosa is more of the star of this movie because she's literally just guiding these women because they're basically slaves and they're going to give birth to warlords and so he's trying to basically keep them away from Immortan Joe who's played by Hugh Key Burns who played Toe Cutter in the original Mad Max movies in this rebooted series he's playing Immortan Joe and he's just so good in this movie and like the, he has these war boys who one of them is played by Nicholas Holt and the other one's played by Josh Cutter uh, Josh uh, you know and he basically is uh, you know uh, they both were in X-Men movies and they're both like basically play war boys and one of them is uh, literally just like w wants to impress him more joe and like you see like nicholas holt's character he basically you know uh, starts out as a war boy that wants to like oh i want to impress him more joe because they always see him as their god their lord and savior and so they're like i want to die on the fury road and everything and it's like really like this like you know it's kind of like he's a cult leader you know and they're essentially his followers and they just like see him and they want to die for them they, like he even sprays them and then like you know, and they just want to die for him, and he, like, sees another, like, 
his soldiers in his army. Like he doesn't see that there's nothing else. And so I think it's really poetic. You see this and like how like Nicholas Holt feels like you know he kind of after he fails in Morton Joe he sees that you know like this he's no one he's a no one and everything and I like how he has like many sons and everything and he sees his sons are like um you know like they follow him and everything they all have birth defects because you know it's an apocalyptic wasteland and you know there's even like shows you like how futuristic apocalyptic tools they use in this world and you know obviously the movie's not accurate because like okay if global warming happened and you know the apocalypse and everything shut the world down and everything like that we, we would not just everything would turn into dust i mean i feel like that's the most but i mean you have to it's a movie you have to turn it around to like okay this apocalypse happening in in australia and basically everybody's like driving around in cars trying to kill each other and i mean i mean look, it's a great movie road warrior was always been the like everyone said the road warrior is the best one this one tops the road warrior because it's just so good like i mean people are like oh my god this is a such a good film because like the car scenes and everything it's all practical and you see like there's a scene with like they're like a monster truck trying to cross over and it just looks so real and i'm like and apparently this movie was so big like you know they were out there they were having issues because it was so big in australia and like there was like having issues you can hear the story that, oh fury road uh, again another movie you know have another issue a car broke down in the middle of the nowhere and I had to fix it and shut production down and all that stuff and but i mean it paid off big because they george miller wanted to shoot this practically they want to shoot on the sound stage and it felt now i understand obviously and charlie Stan and tom hardy butted heads because you know they're like charlie Stan out there we're all everybody's sweating their balls off and basically like look it's in like a hundred degree weather and tom hardy shows up late to set and then everybody's like starts chewing you know like it was like you know you look like you know and i understand they butted heads because of that and I mean, and I understand it's not a great experience on set because you, you know, you just want to show it because you love acting, and then of course, you know, you, like you're in unfortunate circumstances with everything happening around you, and so it just, you know, you, you want to clash, you know. And I think that it is really cool that they got to make this beloved film because Mad Max Fury Road is so great. I mean, it has this Junky XL score is so well done. I love that you know the whole every character in the movie has an important role for being in this movie. It's not just hey we're in this movie because even all the brides they're all now famous actresses because but they were in this movie, and like Zoe Kravitz, Riley who Rose Huntington Whitley. I mean they all Abby Lee and they're all in these movie and they're all like important to the story of this plot. And I really enjoy this about it. And you know Tom Hardy, who literally is like I'm bet you at the the read through he basically was just sitting there because. But, like, in the movie, he has an important character. I mean, he's just, he is, like, the most important character in the movie. And you know what? He's not the focus because this is more of, this is more about the Fury Road. This is not about Mad Max. And Matt, and so I think that's what's really great about this movie. And, like, how, like, you know, like, this, like, you know, the story about a woman who wants to bring someone to this, like, paradise. And then it turns out this paradise is gone. And then she's like, well, we got to go back. And then it's like, you know, essentially it is like we're taking them here. Then we have to come back and go back to there. And, and like these, the car battles and everything, there's even beautiful night shots and like the desert landscape, especially if you watch them in 4K, oh my God, it's so beautiful. Like this movie is literally made for like, you know, the, the highest picture quality as possible. Like this is what cinematography should be. And the costumes are great. The score, and George Miller even said he got his wife to edit this movie because he wanted a, a female's editing perspective of this movie and so she edited this movie and she won an oscar for it i mean i mean this movie was literally this changed the way we look at movies like you know i mean i mean looked at like i mean look you look at this movie like 2015 it came out and oh my god everyone loved this movie like i mean I, still steven soderbergh said he still doesn't understand how they made this movie because it's so beautiful and well done that he just cannot figure it out and i think this show is that if you do a good job you'll be rewarded and i hope with Fur furiosa we have the same genie in the bottle, magic in the bottle, striking three times. Because it struck once with Road War and it struck twice with Fury Road. I hope it strikes another time Fury Road, so that time will tell. If I had to give this beautiful movie a grade, I will give it an A+. Thank you so much.